For our lab, we're just going to focus on how changing the mass affects the acceleration of a system of objects. To study the effect of changing an object's mass on its acceleration, you're going to use a low friction cart on a level track uh, connected to a hanging weight, which is over a pulley, and the force of gravity on that hanging weight is going to cause the car to accelerate. Because the force of gravity on that hanging mass is constant, the car and the mass have a constant acceleration. The lab equipment involves the following. A hanging mass, which may be different for each lab group, a low friction car, a low friction pulley for the string to go over, the horizontal track for the car, a motion detector hooked up to a laptop with Logger Pro, and a mass set. To determine the relationship between the acceleration object and its mass, we're going to have to figure out how to change the mass of the system, measure its acceleration while keeping the, some of the forces on the system constant the entire time, making sure that any change in the acceleration is only due to the change in the system's mass and not the change in any forces on the system. So we've already seen from talking about the water rocket car example that there's only really two things that will affect the acceleration of an object. Uh, an object's mass or uh, the sum of the forces on the object. And we said both of these, these things will affect the acceleration. So let's talk about how we can find both the total mass of our system of objects that you guys saw in the, the video just recently uh, and the sum of the forces. Well, the total system mass uh, that's just the mass of the cart and the masses on top plus the hanging mass. We'll call that mass 2. So the total mass is just the sum of all of the individual masses. Mass 1 plus mass 2. Uh, and we'll find in a little bit in the video how we're going to find that or measure that. So that just leaves us with determining what the sum of the forces is on our total system of masses. Well, we have two masses. We've got the cart, the masses on top of it, all that combined, and our hanging mass. Kind of like two separate objects as one system. So let's find out all the forces on both the hanging mass, that's mass 2, and the cart and everything on top of it, that's mass 1. Let's start with the second mass, or the hanging mass. You know, gravity is pulling down on it, so we have a force of gravity in the hanging mass, and there's a string attached to it, and there's tension in that string while the whole system is accelerating. So we have the force of tension pulling up on the mass. When we look at the car with the added mass on the track, or mass 1, we know there's also a force of gravity pulling down on it that's greater in size because that has more mass. And since the car is sitting on top of the track, we know the track is pushing back up on it with a normal force. Because that car is accelerating just to the right in this diagram, it's not accelerating up or down, we know that the force of gravity pulling down on the car and the normal force pushing up have to be the same size. We can just label those as the same size. The other force on this car, since there's a rope <clears throat> attached to the right of it and there's tension in that rope, Ropes we know pull, so there's a force of tension pulling on this car to the right. Now, because we're using the low friction cars and the low friction pulleys, the amount of friction on our whole system is fairly small, so we're just going to ignore it for now. So essentially, we have five separate forces on our system of masses. Let's look at that at the bottom of the screen. When we look at the hanging mass, we have the force of gravity on the hanging mass. plus the force of tension uh, pulling up on it. Then we look at the car sitting on the track and we have, uh, we're going to add to that the force of gravity is going to be on the car plus the normal force that's pushing back up plus the force of tension on that car pulling to the right. So we have five forces on our system and we have to add all of those up to find out what the sum of those forces are. But before we do that, let's find out if any of those forces cancel. And before we do that, I want to talk about defining direction. 
So when we look at the car on the track, we know the positive direction, x direction is the right. Um, but we're going to define this direction, so the car that moves to the right or the hanging mass that moves down as the positive x direction. And we'll say, so when the mass moves down and the car moves forward or to the right, we're going to say that's the positive direction. And conversely, we're going to say that uh, anything moving to the left for the car above or up for the mass, we're going to call the negative x direction. We'll see how this is useful in just a little bit. Well, let's look at our forces. If you look at the forces in the car, we already talked about the fact that the force of gravity and the normal force are the same size, and they're in opposite directions, and so if we add those two things up together, the force of gravity in the car and the normal force, they cancel each other out. Now let's focus on the two frictional forces. The force of friction, sorry, not the friction, the force of tension on the car is trying to pull the car in our positive x direction, so we're going to call that a positive force of tension. If we look at the force of tension on the hanging mass, it's trying to pull the hanging mass up, which we said was the negative x direction. Since it's the same string, and pulleys don't affect the size of the tension in the string, it just redirects the direction of that tension, the tension on the car and the tension on the hanging mass are the same size. A little slash right there, a little slash right there. And they're pulling on our system in perfectly opposite ways. Since the tension on the car is positive, the tension on the hanging mass is negative. And so because we have two forces that are the same size, trying to cause our system to move in opposite directions, those two tension forces also cancel one another out. So when we add up all of the forces on our system, out of those five, we see that the only force left over is the force of gravity on our hanging mass, right here. Okay? And because that's the only force left over, that is the sum of the four forces on the total system. So if we want to find out what the sum of the forces on our system is, all we need to do is know what the mass is. Well, in the video you recent, just recently saw, the hanging mass had a mass of 0.1 kilograms. And we know that since we're on the Earth, there's 10 newtons for a whole kilogram. So there's only one newton for a tenth of a kilogram. Let's go back to our data table and talk about collecting some specific samples of data, like finding the total mass of the system and also measuring what the acceleration of the system is. To find the total mass of the system, we've got to find the mass of everything involved, including the car, the mass set, uh, the mass set stand, the string, and the hanging mass. Now the triple beam balance that we're going to use cannot handle all of that mass, so we're going to have to take off all the extra masses and find just the mass of the car, the string, the hanging mass that you're using, and the mass holder. Slide the masses back and forth in the triple beam balance until everything is balanced to get the mass of everything except the added masses. The reading on the triple beam balance turned out to be 386 grams or 0 0.386 kilograms, which is what you write in your data table. In order to calculate the total system's mass, all we need to do is add up the mass of everything involved. We have our added masses, which is 500 grams, 200 grams, 200 grams, 150, 20, and 10 grams. When we add all of the kilograms together, or the grams, we end up getting 1.08 kilograms. <clears throat> we have to add that to the mass of our car, hanging mass, string, and mass holder, all of the things that will be accelerating. We're going to add that to 0 0.3. 86 kilograms, we get a total of 1.466 kilograms. Now we can write down that the total mass of our system is 1.466 kilograms. To find the acceleration, you're going to use your motion detector, pull the car back within 10 centimeters, not much closer, 
hit collect and it's going to graph a position versus time graph and a velocity versus time graph. You can see on the bottom that the velocity versus time graph is linearly increasing showing a constant acceleration. To find the acceleration is just the slope of that straight line velocity graph. For this trial the slope was 0.6772 meters per second per second which was the acceleration of our system given our total mass. For the next trial to change the system's mass all we need to do is remove some known amount of mass and measure a new acceleration. Remember that when finding the acceleration all you need to do is determine the slope of your velocity versus time graph. For the second trial since 0.500 kilograms were removed that leaves a total system mass of 0.966 kilograms and the acceleration as measured by the slope of the velocity versus time graph for the second trial was 1.046 meters per second per second. Here you can see the two accelerations side by side. The blue line represents the second trial which has a smaller mass and you can see that it has a higher slope or higher acceleration. When you do your experiment, you want to make sure that you're getting the largest range of data possible and that you're getting eight, at least eight different data points. To get this largest range possible, you want to keep taking mass off until in the end you have nothing left on your cart uh, and that's the only thing that's accelerating. The last thing you want to remember to write down is the value for the sum of the forces on your system, which remember just comes from how much gravity is pulling on your hanging mass. For my lab setup, there was a 100 gram mass hanging near 0.1 kilogram, so the sum of the forces was 1 newton. Yours might be different. Now that you're familiar with the lab and the lab setup, you should be ready to start collecting data and investigating the effect of mass on an object's acceleration.